guest with us, um, Donna Lascalia, who is the new DPW director. And Donna, we have you on at 4.30. I hope that's okay. Sure. Okay. That means you just get to watch us in action until then. And you're welcome to stay as long as you want afterward, too. Um, should we go around and introduce ourselves briefly? Maybe say uh, a word about your um, your particular piece in all of this, if you have one, or or your you know profession, whatever you feel like saying. But briefly, please. start with Marilyn. Okay, uh, my name is Marilyn Castriata. Uh, I recently got a master's in conservation biology, um, and this is on forest conservation, uh, and I also have a lot of experience with. I'm Todd Ford. I'm the executive director of the Hampshire Council of Governments uh, during the day. I'm also an urban planner uh, by the train. What are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> I've raised your kids. <laughs> I'm the tree warden. Thank you, Rich. Yeah, I'm Liza. I work at DBM. Um, Lily Lombard. I'm the commission's chair, a uh, longtime community organizer in Northampton, a uh, uh, former founder or director of Grow Food Northampton, which operates the community farm down in Florence. Jay Gerard, Surf Plant Arborist, presently landscape manager at Smith College, uh, born and raised in Northampton, worked with tree, with Rich for many years, doing tree stuff. That's where I fit in. My name is Jenna Werner. I um, work at Springfield Technical Community College. I'm, I teach in the Landscape Design and Management Department. I'm a professional horticulturist, and uh, I think that's it. I'm Rob Postal. I'm mostly retired, and I have spent uh, part of the last three or four years planting trees on the streets of Maryland, and that's a volunteer. Do you want to say a little something about yourself? Um, sure, my name is Donald Scalia and, um, with the Department of Public Works and I've um, been here almost three months now. Um, so my background is in the uh, utility industry, um, industrial construction, that's the world that I come out of. Um, so this is my first foray into uh, municipal government. Thank you for the <laughs> okay, so this is normally the time for public comment, but there is no member of the public here to make a comment. So um, I keep forgetting this item on the agenda, and that is approval of the last mi um, month's minutes. I gotta, I gotta make a note to myself on that. Um, but let's go ahead and do that. Uh, if you haven't looked at the minutes yet, can you take a moment now? We have two sets, right? There's one for June 15th. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. I only got the June 15th. Because one came earlier. Oh, there should be. Did anyone get them by email? Yep, I got them. Yep, June 15th. Yep, I think I got it. Yep. Okay, so we're talking about two, two sets just to clarify for the record. And it looks to me like the June 1st meeting where uh, Andrew, there were three people absent, so you guys had a pretty brief meeting. Yeah. <laughs> 
two people. First minutes. It's not to, to go on the minutes, but I uh, I offered to give them to pre consultation on the council vote project for an hour or so work. They haven't contacted me. Okay, let's start with the June first, since there are only four of you here. So I know I'm going to abstain from this one. But are there any are there any changes to the June fourth minutes? Motion to accept. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Abstain. I'm abstaining. One, two, two abstentions. All right. June 15th. Some leaks, they put a flag up. Um, 
Um, all right, the other thing was the Henry Lappin, who, um, as you may know, is the chair of the Amherst Public Shade Tree Committee, uh, wrote a recent art, uh, letter to the editor. And I would just like to say that Amherst seems to have a lot more liberty to like speak as a voice, uh, as a committee, than we currently do uh, without having to go through the mayor. <laughs> so he wrote this on his own. They also uh, maintain a Facebook page. I just found that interesting information. Um, I think that as we get more established, it's something we might want to circle back to in terms of having our own presence. Um, but nevertheless, he wrote this, and um, I thought it was very good. And what I thought that, you know, since Jen and I back in May talked about um, doing a, a, um, some kind of an op-ed piece on this very issue, that we could at the very least um, write a reply letter to the editor, supporting some of the points here, re-emphasizing them, and, and contextualizing it in Northampton, because we've been experiencing so that was that was my thought, unless um, somebody feels otherwise. I have a question. Um, do you know if there's much of a difference in um, either price or energy available on a home system versus the community system? No. I, that would require some research. Yeah. Okay. Because he was pointing that direction and it sounded like a good alternative, but I'm wondering if people are feeling that for whatever reason it's not as... You mean cost, like cost effective? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I haven't studied it. Yeah, it seems okay on my house. Oh, Maybe God. This is, this is the expert on the subject. Well, so, um, putting on my, my Amsher card, so we have a program, Amsher Solar, which is a community solar project that has discounts on net metering credits, which is that's what a community solar project is. Uh, and so it, it's going to be more valuable to you in the long run to do a community solar project through net metering than it would be, say, if you leased the panels through Sunrun or some you know, leasing company. Uh, but not as advantageous, probably, as if you installed them on your house, uh, just because you get three streams of income. Then you get the energy, the recs, and the tax credits, uh, while the, the community solar would probably be your second best. Uh, okay. So a lot of people can't put them on their roof for whatever reason, trees, grass, or slate, or the angle of the roof, um, choose to do a community solar one. Mm -hmm. So I could write one that's yeah. the director you of the H-Car. Totally okay, so how about uh, we discuss this a tiny bit more under um, other business not uh, reasonably anticipated? So, uh, can we just bump further conversation about this there in the interest of staying on task? Okay, great. Um, excellent. Let's have the tree board. Um, okay, so a couple things to report since we haven't met in a month. So we've had three different public shade tree hearings. Um, we had one at uh, 306 Chesterfield Road on Monday. Uh, we had one on the 29th of June at 1.30. I'm sorry. Um, that was not the that was the, uh, hold on a second. So we had the one at 306 Chest Chesterfield Road on the 18th of this month. We had uh, one at 130 Spring Street on the 13th, and we had uh, the previous month, the uh, last Wednesday of the month, we had at uh, 86 Massasoit Street. Um, all of them resulted in uh, there were no objections, so all the trees were removed. Um, two of the public shade tree hearings, one on Chesterfield Road and one on Massasoit Street, were all results of uh, new driveways, so not subject to site plan approval. Except the one at 86 Massasoit Street um, was a little different that was the one we had the issue with the driveway permit. The whole house was built before the driveway permit was issued, which is backwards from our process. Um, the 130 Spring Street, which is 18 to a lot of body, they actually did go in front of the planning board and had a uh, site plan approval. Um, and uh, they actually followed uh, all the regulations uh, with 
the exception, I don't believe that the actual significant tree ordinance was invoked in there uh, because of the lack of information that was actually on the site plan. The site plan was hand drawn and the plan were accepted, which in my opinion is uh, not acceptable. Yeah. So I, I, I've had, uh, I've had, I've had, had conversations with the uh, I've had conversations with Carolyn Mish about this, and so Carolyn is on the same page going forward. Anybody that goes to the site plan approval has to be the actual uh, engineering drawing, existing conditions, proposed site work, and, uh, and uh, the tree inventory, providing those trees that are over 20 inches. I haven't quite figured out exactly what the planning board means by tree inventory. I haven't quite got that far yet. Those tree inventories can be, if they're not specified, Inch ash tree, and that's it. Yeah. You know, it doesn't talk about the health, it doesn't talk about any kind of tree protection. So, can you give some suggestions? About I, I can. I, I need to address that with Carolyn to kind of maybe go in front of go to a planning board meeting or actually meet with Wayne and Carolyn first and then maybe go to the planning board if necessary to find out exactly what they mean by the tree inventory. I found the same um, issue with the uh, Brown Hill Road or Clark School, former Clark School development. You know, that was an incomplete tree inventory. So, I, it's been, uh, planning's been very good about getting me to, uh, uh, site, any site plans, proposed site plan, anything that happens, they've actually sent them to me. So I've reviewed them, gone over them, and found a lot of the inventories on there were not accurate. So I've made a bunch of comments as, long, as well as David Leto, who's a city engineer, for other uh, engineering issues. And all three of these uh, public safety hearings have had some form of mitigation, whether it's either funds being deposited in the tree warden account or um, trees planted in kind. So, and also, they all of them have done tree protection. Are you satisfied with the mitigation? Yep. Yep, I am satisfied. Uh, I'm satisfied with the tree protection. I've taken the time to meet with all the contractors that are working with these different sites to make sure they follow uh, the ANSI 300 Part 5 standards. And I actually made, I inspected before I even signed the driveway permit. Worked out pretty well. Um, quick update on the tree inventory. I finally received uh, at the end of last week the signed uh, contract from the state. So we now have a contract with the state for thirty thousand dollars. It extends till the thirty-first of December. So I joke. I sent the tree inventory, the revised tree inventory uh, that we talked about back to Joe Cook for his review when he came to get it back to me. His comments, he had a few comments on there, uh, more about bidding, things of that nature. So we hope to have that back in a day or two from him, and then we can uh, put the bid on the street. Um, tree watering, which I think we're probably going to tackle later on. You're going to talk about that uh, later on? Well, sure. I mean, you, we can do it under evaluation and record keeping. Okay, that's fine. You want to do that? Yeah, okay. that's fine. Um, and the other thing, I have to, one thing I'll tell you is we lost 16 of the 25 barrel of trees. Sixteen out of twenty-five, yeah. including the one at the elementary school. Yes. Yeah. Bridge Street. Bridge Street and the school bus. Oh, really? Yeah, those are the ones that we planted after, after, after our day. So. Have you been in touch with that company? Not yet, because what we did is I actually had not yet. I have all the documentation, all the photos we've been taking the trees, yeah. the locations, and on the sent you a script, all the information, and we'll try to get. Uh, type of uh, in-kind placement, whether it's going to be for credit or whether we'll end up getting, we'll probably end up getting, as Jay said earlier, you know, in our conversation, we're not going to get the same nursery side, most likely. But if we're going to, if we're going to get replacement of the 16 barrel, we need to do it this fall. I don't think we should really be doing it in the spring, yeah. especially given the, un, the unknown weather patterns that we've been having the last couple of years. Were they all different species? Yeah, they were, it was just a matter of, I think it's just a, combination of the way that they came to us um, and it just got hot really fast. It was dry, even our day it was dry and windy and we watered them pretty regularly, and more so than the actual other trees that Rob's been planting that we've ordered. We planted those right from the, from the get-go and we watered them from the get-go. So I think it was, most of the damage was probably done prior to us actually getting them. Yeah, you can't, you can't blame it on the weather. No, no, but it hasn't helped either. Mm -hmm. so. Also, think we should 
uh, at least uh, review, like uh, think about whether we should go up and pick them up ourselves. You know, I don't know if that's a possibility, but. Okay, well we can we can talk more about that under evaluation because I think those are all really good questions about um, you know when when you have a massive failure like that, what are the various elements that are involved in the failure and how you know, because it could be any number of things or combination. Um, I mean, I know that most other communities I've spoken to use the transport system, but it could be that they, they hired a different contractor this year or something. They did, they did something different. I just don't know. So I think we need to get some more information about that. Anything else? I'm also That's it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, we'll, we'll start a little bit early with um, the next agenda item. So um, welcome, Donna. Uh, this is the um, Hands of Public Safety Commission. We're actually a relatively new commission. We've been operating a little over a year. Um, there used to be a tree committee that had a really different uh, mission and actually tried to serve for a period of time as the tree warden, and it, but with uh, um, a little bit of a bizarre relationship with the DPW, which which does you know handles hazard trees and plants trees and has a tree budget. Although at that time it was a very very small tree budget, so it was a very different commission that ended up basically just fizzling out, and a new one needed to be to be born. And when the mayor created a uh, revised the city's charter, that was he he saw that as the opportunity to bring forth a new commission. And so we're all relatively, um, you know, new appointees, and um, we have a mission statement, which um, the the one that the mayor created, we looked at it again after about a year and tweaked it, and so that's the one that we're operating by. I'm happy to pull that up for you if that's helpful. All right, let me do something there. Bear with me. I'm using my daughter's. Okay, well, I'm going to, um, while, that's, while that's loading, because I think I could be here for quite a while trying to hunt this down, um, I will also just say that we have priorities for um, 2016, which we have identified, and those are to create a tree inventory, um, because one has never been done before for the city of Northampton, so that is to identify every public shade tree. And by public shade tree, that's a um, tree that exists along the city's public right of way. So it's not, it doesn't include trees in parks. It's mostly when you think of like tree belt. That's what public shade trees are. So that's our, um, pull that up. So that's one goal. You want me to read it? Um, do you have them? Right here on the website. Oh. Uh, goals include launching a thorough tree inventory of Northampton's public shade trees, seeking public input and crafting a 20-year vision for our tree canopy, plant 100 street trees, and reviewing Northampton's ordinances that relate to tree protection. I don't, are those the four, though, that we... Those are the four. Oh, okay. Those are, yes. Can, can you, I'm sorry. Those are FY15-16 goals. That's on the web page. I'm not sure if we... we did you have any updates? I haven't. That's why I don't 
right. Anyway, my computer's completely crashed, so that's not going to be good. But I remember two others were to work on um, crafting and refining the city's ordinance and regulations regarding trees. And then the last one was to create a public engagement plan for engaging citizens in the work of art. So the tree inventory, regs, and ordinances, um, an engagement plan, and a mission statement. That was one of our goals for 2016 as well. So we're, we're picking our way through those things. Um, and obviously the biggest thing is biggest project is the tree inventory. And I don't know if you've had a chance to discuss that with Rich, but that is, um, he just referred to that, that will be go underway of the late summer. And that will really guide us, hopefully. From that, we'll be able to have baseline information for going forward. That's so that $30,000 was a grant that we applied for from the United State for that $30,000 coming from the mayor's going to match it. Yeah, we have $76,000 available. The mayor actually, before Tom uh, was appointed, we, the mayor uh, went, to see, went to the city council and got money. Uh, so it's $46,000 in that account and $30,000 in the PCR. So even though we don't actually have the physical money, we spend it like we spend against the account. And then at the end, we basically send the PCR all our reimbursement documents. It'll be an interesting process. I've never heard of the tree inventory before, so I really use a lot of information from uh, a lot of other professionals, uh, Amherst, uh, Springfield, Chicopee, Jones, Jones for, and then uh, Andy Hill from Davy Tree is very helpful as well. So it's kind of a big undertaking. Well, do we, we think that you're we measuring about 7,000 trees? No, I guess I believe it. We've actually changed that. Okay. Because under Joe Cook's recommendation, this is kind of off topic, but Joe Cook's recommendation is that we say that we're going to, we are going to survey all, all public shade trees in public right away. It's up to 11,500. Okay. So Just getting a magnitude of what we're up to. So it's a little ins and outs of it's not, you understand Joe is very uh, well of knowledge when it comes to writing contracts so that things go in the favor. Once this, once this document is created, what is the intention for its use? Um, that's a great question. I, I, another one of our 2016 goals that we brainstormed, although I didn't, I, we didn't identify as our top four goals. It's very ambitious, but we eventually want to want to create a proposal that we present to the mayor and city council to to undertake a massive retreating of the city. So to zoom out even further, Northampton has experienced shade tree decline for probably the last 70 years, consistently. Ever since Dutch elm disease came and, and you know, blighted so many elm trees, we really never bounced back. And then of course, trees have just aged out and been exposed to harsher and harsher urban conditions, a, you know, lots of things, climate change. So um, we would like to put forward a, a, an ambitious proposal and then carry it out. Yeah. Yeah, the, end, the end goal is to create a document like this, which is a tree management plan, that will be part of this, all, basically all the data that's gathered from the inventory um, through the, the amount of trees we have, the species we have, the condition, um, the tree risk assessment, all the, and actually identifying 2,000 planting cells will all be captured in this document. So it'll be the raw data that we're actually going to dump in the GIS that we're going to get from whoever the vendor is, and then the vendor's going to create this for us. This will be the tool, really, that we use, I think, anyways, to, to get us to the proposals we need to get to, you know, to the mayor that we, we support uh, this plan and so on and so forth. We encourage you to adopt it as well. Yeah. So, and it also helps us identify what parts of the city are the greatest need of retraining the species that we need to incorporate or not use to much more of species selection.
you know, we're actually, we're not, we're not quite sure, but we are, the city's implementing Munici, is that the Munici? That, that is correct. It's called Munici. 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 I'll get it right eventually. I got it right eventually. Munici. Um, it's going to be our work order system, our work management system, I should say. Um, and we are unsure at this point because we don't. I don't know. I don't think we really have very many. I haven't had one of them in presentation. Wondering whether or not the actual information that we garnered in the inventory, the inventory can interface with the um, city to, to make work orders. It, it, it can, it, yes. It they, can. Can, they can build the platform to any software necessary. So theoretically, all the information that's, that's captured could be loaded into the GIS system, which will then map over to the city, which we can then use to identify the trees as assets and then assign work orders, whatever they might be, to that asset, or maintenance schedule, or whatever might be necessary. So that, that, that will be another really good tool, because, you know, everything's it's kind of a little, not discombobulated, but it's just a very slow process to get work orders. You know, although the tree end of the business, I think, you know, seems to be the best flowing work order, part of the work order system that models. All right. Yeah, so that's good. <laughs> so that just to add that. I've also heard that that system is going to link to the, the website to enable the public to be able to kind of inject. That is correct. It's really going to revolutionize operations. That's what's uh, when, when, like, a year, three years? Uh, we're going to start the sort of pre planning and testing, like, I would say, with the couple of months and we're looking at, at deployment um, probably like in the spring, I would say. Uh, hopefully sooner if all goes well, but we actually have to uh, customize it to the assets of the city um, to a place where it's workable for us kind of across the board. Um, there's, a, there's a pretty good platform now. Um, there are some other cities which currently use the software, so we can sort of base it uh, off of some of their assets, but we'd be customizing a lot of things specifically for an odd um, And that's kind of the pre-planning stage that we have to go through, um, which is what's going to delay the implementation uh, to some degree. Yeah, and when I when I described what our what our vision is, our goal is, I think I, I omitted a really important part, which the DPW be very engaged in, which is you know, maintenance, monitoring, evaluation. And we're hoping that our tree inventory won't become just a static snapshot, but can be added to and, you know, constantly um, analyzed uh, as da new data come in. So that would really help, because if, if that can move to flow to work for the DPW in a really efficient way, um, that would, I think, make your job a it, it would, this will almost be, it, you know, it's sort of like a live database yeah. and as things wow. get updated, things are updated in real time, so it'll, it, it, it's, it, you know, it's a living document. Because you know. yeah. so. we're already, you know, later on in the meeting, we're going to be talking about evaluation and record keeping that we already need to do with the trees we just planted. And at currently, you kind of have nowhere to house those things, or not, nowhere really good. So. Um, it's going to be great when we have. <laughs> no, it's all to you. No, it's just in a book for the moment. So yeah. I'll load it all up. But we do have the GIS mapping system for our tree, our tree planting, and the yep. ADS operations to put together. Yeah. Um, but entering the data is just you know, time consuming. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's really helpful. And the other thing that just to give you some historic context. What's, what's also very, very different about where we are now is that we have a staffer on the DPW, Rich, as our tree warden and collaborator. Um, you know, the, the city for many, many years did not really have a tree warden. They had like, a, what they call it, a tree surgeon? Tree surgeon. Tree surgeon. But no one really fulfilling this, um, this actually required position by Mass General Law 87, which used to have, actually it's not 87, there's another one that sets up a tree board. 
No, it's MPL chapter 87. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and so we, I, I just feel like we've, we've entered a really new and exciting chapter with the city, and especially with the DPW, and as someone who's lived in Northampton for almost 15 years and really spent the first couple of years frustrated uh, with what I perceived as a lack of priority and a lack of communication with citizens about the importance of trees. Um, this feels like a really different time. So that's good. And we want you to feel part of that. And it's part of the reason why we invited you here. Because um, we hope that you, know, you share a, a vision of um, a verdant and vibrant and cool Northampton where trees are appreciated as um, valuable green infrastructure and are you know, given equal priority in the services they provide, the public work services, as hard gray infrastructure. I agree, and that's why I'd, I'd refer to them as an asset yeah. mm -hmm. to the city. And, and when we implement our new work, work order and work management system, they would be entering into that as an asset. All right. Um, is there anything else people would like to ask, Anna, or comments you'd like to make? Yeah, uh, just I think you're going to find that you're in a really unique position, uh, just being new-ish to uh, municipal uh, government. I always think kind of the new person can can begin to tweak the paradigm that we mm -hmm. often. Uh, uh, infects a, a municipality, which is the sidelization of the various departments. Um, and I think that uh, if, if done properly, you'll be able to um, kind of de silo some things, especially with, with planning. Um, and that department, I would just encourage you to open up a, a, a strong line of dialogue with them to talk about everything from, uh, you know, inventories. There seem to be some, some cross discussions around both departments are even doing sidewalks at the same time, but the plans aren't speaking to each other. Um, looking at you know, design, those original designs of streets, uh, that municipal streets are going to come out of your department. Um, and so just working the plan to make sure that they're ad adhering to the plans that they have for pedestrian infrastructure and also adhering to a vision of this commission and the mayor for street trees and that type of thing. I really think you're going to have a, a, a unique powerful opportunity to, to kind of break down some of those, those barriers. And I'm just I'm glad to see you on board and encourage you to, to keep picking away those bricks. Yeah, thank you. Could you say a little bit about your background on it and how it's gone so far in the new world? Sure. I've been here uh, about almost three months now, so about two and a half months. And I come out of the utility world, um, a licensed electrician. Came up through the ranks of Local 103 in Boston, and, um, became a master electrician, and relocated up to Vermont several years ago. And I most recently ran operations for Green Mountain Power in the southern part of the state, so from um, the New Hampshire border um, almost all the way to New York. So oversaw emergency and uh, regular daily operations uh, for line crew um, contractors and some treaters. Um, so I have uh, some experience uh, working with municipalities um, trying to manage sort of trees near power lines and striking a balance between um, you know what what the utilities interests were and what the municipalities interests were um, which don't necessarily have to be mutually exclusive. So there's there's lots of room for, for compromise certainly and that was something that um, Green Mountain Power tried very hard to work with all affected parties. You know, we need to get the power from point A to point B, but that doesn't mean all the trees need to come down in the meantime. So, so definitely striking, striking a balance and, and something we worked very hard to do. Thank you. I guess I'd go ahead. I would just want to put a plug first including structural soil or some sort of way to get uh, more root space for trees, especially downtown Florence and the Northampton area where we probably get tree down. It's been highly overlooked in the past. We 
um, we just put out a um, request for sidewalk inventory, as, as you mentioned, and it, it's part of that it will prioritize for us what we're going to look at to reconstruct in the coming years, and that's definitely something that we'll take into consideration. So thank you. Oh, I just wanted to say uh, that I feel like we did an enormous amount of work. You know, you know, this commission is just very active. Getting that grant was a big thing. We planted 160 public shade trees last year with volunteers. And um, the public survey of 400 citizens. Yeah, oh yeah, we did the public survey of 400 citizens. We're working on. We've uh, reviewed some plans uh, for the Pleasant Street. We made recommendations on that, and we're working on getting in the process a little bit earlier. So get our information a little bit earlier, but it, you know, it's we've done a lot of stuff, so it's good, it's good. Can I ask you what your vision is for shade trees in Northampton, like professionally or personally, what your, what your vision is for how, how the shade trees can interface with the public infrastructure? I think it's, it's very similar to sort of what my role was with Green Mountain Power. It, it's, it is quite possible um, for public infrastructure and shade trees to coexist very peacefully. And it's, uh, it's about uh, making good decisions, weighing the pluses and minuses, uh, but ultimately there's always a balance that you can strike um, between you know, retaining a, you know, a tree that no one wants to see go and, you know, upgrading whatever infrastructure you need to upgrade. And there's always a balance that can be struck, but it, I think it's important to really be cognizant um, it, of the fact that, that, you know, if there's a, an established tree canopy, you, you want to respect that. So I think it's it's very similar to how an electric utility would, would look at something, and it's all about strength. <laughs> well, I, I do live in Vermont, so I, I have to say that I like maple trees um, for <laughs> obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the there's certainly a lot of challenges. Um, it, the biggest uh, piece of this is is the history, uh, if you will, sort of uh, all, all of the uh, like why the infra yeah, correct institutional knowledge. Why is the infrastructure where it is, and how did it get there, and what were the reasons it, it wasn't put somewhere else? So that's just kind of a, a big generalization. But you, know, you can get more specific as you go down into different projects. But, but understanding the history behind it, a lot of the infrastructure is, is definitely a huge piece of the puzzle. And, and probably the biggest challenge today. Well, following up on, on that, I think Lily already talked about is that the trees were in decline for a long time. And I think the good news is that there are a lot of volunteering and the mayor putting you know, money in the trees. So that decline, which you can see when you drive around, uh, I think the will and the resources are lining up to turn that around and it's part of the commission. So you, you'll drive down some streets and uh, if you look carefully, you'll see them mainly. You can, you can actually see lawns where the trees were. And there are whole streets where almost every house had a tree. That, 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 that that's changing. It's, it's not. It's not the continuing culture. It's, it's turning around. I've been in Crystal Ridge.
Yeah, and if I can just be so bold as to say one of your most important assets is your people. So that's that's just an area I would recommend that you really focus on as well because they are, you know, they they make it happen. Without a doubt. Hmm. All right, well, um, we're almost at the point where we need to move on to the next item of our agenda, but I want to thank you again for coming. Really appreciate it. Lovely meeting you. Thank and you. Um, our door, so to speak, is always open. Um, you have my email, obviously, now, because we we um, communicated about meeting. And so if you have any questions or thoughts or um, concerns, please feel free to contact us. Thank you. I appreciate your hospitality, and thank you for the invitation. It's really great to meet all of you. So thank you. I appreciate thank you. your coming. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is a uh, relook at our group, group agreement that we created last year. So one of the things we did was um, indicate that we wanted to review this annually. And it's been a little bit over a year that we adopted this. So um, the hope is to keep things that are important, add things that we forgot, and get rid of things that we don't want here. But I, I would just like to go through them and read them. Um, I could actually ask somebody, Marilyn, since you're kind of, you you created this document. Yeah. Would you be that person? Sure. Okay. And you can start from the very beginning. Okay, group agreements are ground rules that the group develops and agrees to follow. It is a simply stated social contract that communicates the value and expectation of the group's process and is intended as a shared approach to help a team skillfully and respectfully meet its goal. Group agreements are most effective with input from all members and should be reviewed periodically to make sure that they are still working for everybody. The group agreement of the Northampton Public Shade Commission, personal commitment, attendance, give as much advance notice as possible to chair missing a meeting. Do you want to yes, keep going? going. Yeah. Yeah. Communication. Communicate the chair as early as possible. Duties become overwhelming and reevaluate commitments. Deadlines. Honor set deadlines as best as possible. Preparation. Come to meetings having read minutes and complete work agreed to be done between meetings. Timeliness. Arrive at least a few minutes early to be ready to start at a designated time. Group commitment. Meetings. Envision and seek net positive outcome. Be open to learning and appreciate difference. Participate actively and listen carefully to each other with respect. Ask clarifying questions. Share air time with everyone. Avoid one-on-one -on -one or side meetings. Share responsibility for the progress of the meeting. Feel free to check the adherence of the group to the group of meetings. Public relations. Presume good intention of commissioners, city employees, and officials, and members of the public. Chair responsibilities. Make sure our commission work moves forward according to established deadlines and nudges if necessary. Acts as the sole public spokesperson for commission. All media inquiries are passed on to the chair. Meeting structure. Discussion. Race, hand, chair, rule, and knowledge. Stay on agenda topic, be succinct. If multiple people want to speak, chair will write, give us the names and allow folks to speak in order. Public comment. Allow the duration of comments to be at least three minutes or as long as the person needs per discretion of the chair. Keep comments one way except for clarifying questions. Avoid discussion and expression of opinion except to thank the commenter. Chair may make further discussion in a future agenda item. Face and make eye contact with Give latecomers an opportunity to make comment at the soonest logical break in the meeting discussion. Acknowledge a member of public during a discussion. Give and serve the right of the chair. Room setup. Arrange the tables and chairs in a U-shape in order to face the public. Timekeeping. Adhere to agenda time suggestions unless a vote is made to extend discussion. Meeting minutes. Template. Simplify minutes by having boilerplate table 
of all con of commissioners noting the exit present and time arrived to three votes, bullet point and indent for each. For ease of research, motion, what, who, second, who, vote, yes, who, no, who. In uh, public comment, uh, keep comments one way except for clarifying questions. Do the people come to make comments, do they know that that's the format ahead of time? They, they, because I feel like they, they may be very awkward for them. It's kind of an awkward discussion. I mean, every, they really understand the format. Yeah, everyone's basic knowledge of how public meetings work is different. Yes. But people who are used to public meetings understand that. Those that don't, if uh, if it looks like they want to engage, I'd be happy to make that clear to them. Or the chair could be happy, would be happy to make that clear to them. Yeah, I, I feel very comfortable with at the outset, uh, even when they sign up, if they sign up with you, or maybe at the very beginning when you say, "Look, this is the format." Good, that's but a good suggestion. Just because because we're not responding. Yeah. It, I think sometimes that I've observed people who might be wondering, like. What are we doing? You know, we're not having a discussion. I think that's fine. Comfort. Yeah, and, and like like it says, I think it says the chair uh, can make further discussion of that person's comment in a future agenda item. Right. So that's another thing that I could tell, or whoever is the chair could tell the person. Right. I mean, say to them, we're not going to discuss the issue here now. But we can consider putting on a future meeting agenda and, and, for, right. and letting you know. Right, and, and there is a, I mean, I, I assume there's a reason why we don't want to discuss it right then and there. So. Well, it's not on the agenda, so right. it's, it's not really fair to everyone else nope. in the public to have right. a, a topic that comes up that wasn't on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So I think it's part of open meeting law. Right, so part of your explanation could be, and we just say, we don't discuss it. Yeah. We could discuss it. I think also on the public comment, I think the first bullet should be uh, instead of at least three minutes, I think it's a maximum. Oh, yeah, it should be. Things get a little out of hand, you know, everything. 
refer you back to the chairperson and then you can go back to the vice chair and the vice chair. But it's, in, it's, in, it's informal, that's all. It can be informal. Okay, yeah, please send that along to us. Okay. Why not? That's it's a resource. Yep. I have two, two things that I'd like. Um, one is um, under timeliness, I'd love for it to say arrive uh, a few minutes early, ready to, be, ready to start at the designated time, and stay for the full length of the meeting. I feel like that should be an expectation for everybody, um, and um, I'd just like to make that explicit. Perhaps we need to rediscuss what the length of the meeting is, because there are times I know when I need to be. Yeah, so um, we can discuss about whether you, it would be helpful to get to have advance notice, because what happens is we could suddenly not have a quorum. If, if three of you need to leave early or choose to leave early, and then I'm not aware of it. Um, so uh, can we at least make the agreement that if you think you're going to leave early, that you give notice to the chair? I think under that attendance, uh, you know, the clause can be added if you're going to be late or, you know, leave early for as much notice as possible. So, give as much notice as possible if missing, late arrival, or early. early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it might also be helpful um, in giving the chairperson the ability to craft an agenda. Right. Because the agenda typically has to be, uh, it can be sent as late as Monday, but it really is nice to have it Friday before the meeting, yeah. just in case something happens where the city clerk doesn't get it and there's that extra time. Mm -hmm. But if, if not all commissioners are going to be present for the whole meeting, then the agenda would probably be so robust, I guess, and so you wouldn't end up having all this stuff if you feel crammed that you have to communicate about where you can just, or if that's the case, it's put on the agenda, then you can just say, you know, we'll table it to the next meeting based upon X, Y, Z. Should we put um, submit agenda items to chair by Wednesday, a, a, a week before an upcoming meeting? Um, yeah, I mean, sh sure. Uh, putting Wednesday in here, this, this it makes it a little bit less generalizable, but uh, so just like a week in advance. A week in advance. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other thing? Uh, we only gave 10 minutes to discuss this, and we're at 10, almost at 10 minutes. So is there any other aspect of this people would like to see amended? I can make these edits and then give them to you to... Okay. Can we... Uh, do, do you want me to update the... Should we just make a motion to approve based on um, the edits discussed? Why don't we just... Get the edits and do it at the next meeting. Okay. Yeah, okay. Not, not hurry. Not Sounds good.
up on now on WhatsApp because I'm getting these kind of notifications. So it's been it's been helpful, um, but it still has kinks in it, obviously. It'll, okay. It'll, it'll get better. So, am I hearing you say that you think that a the letter is unnecessary at this point? Would it come across as overly chastising, or would it just say, "Hey, we're here. We understand this happened." And we support that there's been greater communication going on. And I think the letter of support and that the second half of that would be, I think chastising would be a little too yeah. stern. Okay. But I think it's been a letter of support recognizing that the planning board or the planning department and uh, public works and building inspections department are all working together to um, uh, you know, assure that trees in the public right away uh, are being properly cared for. Personnel are properly identified and following all the rules and regulations according to the Cynthia Tree Ordinance. You know, I'm not sure how you would want to write it, but I mean, it's just kind of a congratulatory letter. We're here, we're here to Appreciate support you. you. Appreciation. Really, you don't feel like there should be any slight reference to two major snafus that, that really I think, <laughs> resulted yeah. in the loss of tens of thousands of dollars worth of tree stock? I think, I, mean, we can, I, I think we can write it that, you know, say we're, we're encouraged by the recent progress that has been made, you know, okay. after some early hiccups. Yeah. Um, and, per, and perhaps put a clause in there that, um, you know, highlights our uh, desire to continue that process, you know, in a more formalized manner through, you know, some, some changes to, to ordinance language and tightening up of the review across departments and permits. Okay, so, that's why I get these um, so shall we extend the deadline on that one? I think that's a good Okay, can we? <laughs> I'm feeling generous today. <laughs> well, how much time do you need? Do you want until the next meeting? Sure. That may give you a whole month because I don't think we're meeting early August. So. Do you need that long? I have no vacations. <laughs> that's okay, that's fine. We can't, we can't do that. <laughs> All right, that sounds good. Is that, does anyone object to that plan? All right, well, that's a good segue, Todd, to the next very meaty topic, which I'm going to ask you to leave as well. Okay. Well, I mean, we have we haven't really tackled anything um, other than some of that uh, original work that we did uh, at the previous uh, previous meetings, kind of talking about our desires to bring together. And I've been thinking about how you know if we do try to do this uh, by ourselves, you know, we. we we might end up falling into some pits and hitting some landmines that we don't know exist. Uh, and I didn't know if we were comfortable kind of opening it up to uh, the planning department and, and, and offering to form some sort of working group to identify some of the challenges that they, they may have seen on the, on the ground and use that as a way to kind of build momentum up. I mean, as, as we talked about before, I was hoping that we could use uh, the tree, uh, the tree list that we were developing as kind of a, an entree to a larger discussion on regulations. Um, and I'm, I still think we can do that, but we need that, you know, a, a tree list to kind of start that conversation. But in the, in the absence of that kind of formal tree list, um, maybe we could kind of reach out to Wayne or whoever and say if there's any, you know, interest in forming a an informal working group to kind of look at some of the issues that we've seen, that they may have seen, in an effort to, to close the gap specifically around public shade trees, you know, maybe form a, uh, a battle plan. Other thoughts? You know, one thing I wanted to mention, I received the email from the mayor's office um, in regards to uh, the, the mayor's office this summer as an intern is compiling all city departmental regulations in one comprehensive document available online and searchable, similar to the code of ordinances. But this is going to be not ordinance driven. This is going to be uh, basically like administrative order driven. Um, some of the regulations are known and established and some require being moved from the code of ordinances to this, to this regulation document. This is 
driven because the Board of Public Works was Public Works Commission. Formerly the Board of Public Works was disbanded. And so now there's all these regulations that are in the code of ordinances that uh, reference the Board of Public Works, which are not, there's no Board of Public Works anymore. So because the mayor is now responsible for the Department of Public Works, it's going to get pulled out of the ordinances and put into this document. One of the suggestions from the mayor's office was to also include um, some of the tree work work that we do, mitigation funds, tree removal, replacement regulations. Something like this may be best uh, be included in regulations, even if you have not written or formalized anything yet. You can send along some thoughts and good work on crafting them into a regulation. This sounds like it. should we get you an intern to help you with that? Because you know we're coming up on our academic year. Smith students, Mount Holyoke students, they're always looking for projects like that. Uh, would that be uh, something to consider? Someone who is dedicated, who, who's uh, you know wonky, um, who would love to just assist you with it? Yes, that, 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 is a, that is a possibility. I mean, really, the, I think the best way for me to go about doing this is really to utilize other um, other work that's been created by other other municipalities in the state. I mean, really, that's that's kind of where the that's kind of when I, you know if, if it works, I believe it's a use. That's all I ended up with the tree inventory. I mean, regulations are the same way. There's a lot of communities, uh, Cambridge, uh, Chelsea, even New York City. New York City has a com huge comprehensive um, tree regulations that pertain to trees in the public right away and trees that are in um, uh, and trees that are uh, private trees as well. Yeah. So, well, it, again, like a, lot of research. Uh, a, a, a research minded intern could do that work, footwork for. Um, you know, and, and we would just definitely want to tailor it for our particular needs. For example, Cambridge, you know, they have that, well, it's more than a regulation. I think they have an actual ordinance that says that you have to seek the abutter's permission to plant a public shade tree in the public right of way in front of their property. So we would want to make sure we yeah. filter out stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I know, I had, a, I, had a little, I had a thing with David Levcourt. I could not believe it. I was like, are you crapping? That's just horrible, but he, he supports it. But anyway, um, he had no choice. But I would be happy to uh, put word out, you know, um, at Smith or Mount Holyoke or uh, any of the five colleges, if that's something you want to explore. I feel like that kind of research work doesn't necessarily require anyone around Well, I, I think that would be good to actually compile all the different, you know, from different communities, what yeah. their regulations are. You know, this is this is kind of a this is kind of a funky. It's, it's almost again we're like in silos, right? We have administrative orders that are going to govern part of what we do, and we're going to have ordinance-driven aspects of things that we are going to do really in relation to uh, site plan approval and uh, tr tr tree selection that the planning board uh, implements on developers. You know, so and with and the other thing too is with the change in the zoning and all this new infill zoning, there are corner of Hatfield uh, and Bridge, Bridge Road, there's that development that had one house, now it's going to have five units. You know, so there's all these different things, so it, it's, again, uh, it would be good to have regulations that I can enforce by administrative order, but we still have to deal with the ordinance okay. issues. So we've got two things going on, I think. Um, and, and I don't want to steer too yeah, much toward no, that one. I, just to the I, I think they're both important. Um, so I. Uh, I, I just want to get back to Todd's suggestion, which is to create some kind of intra-departmental, intra-commission um, work group. Well, not to, necessarily for us, but I think, you know, as you know, we basically advise the mayor, so perhaps, you know, some sort of, you know, ground-up recommendation, you know, that ties into, you know, it looks like he's doing his own inventory of the, the DBW uh, ordinances and regulations, what have you, but kind of a recommendation that we've identified, you know, some some gaps and some some things that don't necessarily talk to each other in the, in the process as it as it relates to trees. And our recommendation is that you know we have some sort of working group because this is really it's beyond my time and capability to, to start tackling this stuff. And mm -hmm. you know it's kind of you know, it's the city's job. So to to recommend that, that some sort of working group be created with a specific task 
to begin to coordinate that, you know, as it specifically relates to shade trees, because without that, you know, we risk them continuing to be ignored in new public infrastructure projects, new planning projects, et cetera. There's this, this gap there. Uh, perhaps that way then we can leverage the expertise that the city has. We can participate through me and others, uh, and we can bring the DPW into it, and it can be a bit more of a, a team lift instead of just kind of us shouting about it. So you're, you're suggesting, suggesting that city staff that the city identifies staff from various departments who can work on it. It's not not involved citizen volunteers, not commissioners. Uh, correct. Okay. How how realistic do you think that is, Rich? Given my own time frame, I don't I I don't think that it's I think this is why obviously they have an intern, so I don't think it's realistic to have city staff. It's realistic to have city staff provide the information to someone to you know, to uh, categorize it, and then someone has to disseminate the issues and how they communicate between them. How much money do we have? How much money do we have? Well, we have a lot of money, but it depends which one. We're looking at different um, uh, towns and cities, what they do, and uh, the Lexington Tree Meeting is really interesting. It's like a, it's a document, it's like a 50 page document. But they have like their ordinances and their bylaws and their accounts, their bylaw, their legal authority, the structure of the city, they have like you know, their fee schedule, their fine schedule, their permits, their setback plantings, they have like visual diagrams of like what a violation is. And like Conway, Conway School does that stuff for like fee fee, but like you could, you could probably hire like a team of three kids from Conway School to do like a nice graphic document and, and they could work with us and then with somebody to guide guide them on that and then we can have like a visually interesting document. And I think the town of Lexington what they I think it's a part of their like regulatory packages. And I think that's something that everybody supports, but I mean the actual process of doing that work is like something that if you had a team of three three grad students less than out for a semester, it would be interesting. So I mean it's like a different course, but they um they're always asking me right. for projects and I think it's like 500 bucks, or it depends on if you're the scale of the project. It's like 500 or 5,000, depending upon which category you're in. But mine was like 500 bucks, and we got a good result. I've seen stuff they produce, it's really. And the city has a precedent. It's professional. It's good. Yeah, the city has a precedent, precedent with working with Conway for similar type of projects. So I think it sounds like we want something that's really good, really persuasive, informative, and it's new. Necessarily catalyst, but a way of shifting the course of the dialogue while forcing the regulations. That so, would be what's meant for So, do you envision it being handed out to with bid documents or newer employee? Yeah, like, who's the audience? The, yeah, yeah, like what would we use? Well, I guess it's a combination of residents, contractors, employees. Um, I guess. Uh, yeah. Presumably there'd be a PDF online, right? so you don't have to right. do something right. to give it to them. But it, it so somebody wanted to pull a building permit to move a driveway or whatever, they would have to access this PDF and, and they would know. Yeah, no, they, they would, but the, the municipality document, the municipality software package mm -hmm. is going to take all the city's permitting from every department make it so it's interchangeable across the whole city. And that's one of the problems that we have now is that DPW has its own permitting process for trench permits because we're the, we're the enforcing authority. The building department has a separate set of uh, rules and regs um, and they issue building permits. So what they, all of those things are all like housed in silos. Mm -hmm. and the municipality is supposed to take all those silos and squeeze them together. So when a contractor goes to the building department and pulls a permit to build a house, DPW is going to get a notification via email or the work order system that a driveway permit has to be pulled. Good. And then I'm going to get a notification that there's a driveway permit at this location, and then I'm going to have to go out there and actually physically inspect it. Mm -hmm. That's so right now we're operating all separately. Mm -hmm. So we're actually doing this based, you know, we're communicating based on our 
the old system that we have, which is one email or a phone call. And then this is where we get things messed up, like we have with the different site plan rules. And yeah. That but but there's two but there's there's two parts to that. There's the process which that kind of addresses, yeah. and then there's the actual regulations themselves, mm -hmm. which um, you know would be great in, in a in a booklet, but the very regulations themselves don't really exist. So you know, for example, the, the, that new that new project at the Florence Center, the, the new building, <coughs> no plants, I mean, no trees, no bushes, no nothing, and that happened because there's no regulations that dictate that a landscape plan be submitted with you know x number of street trees per x, x number of parking spaces per x amount of frontage. I mean, very basic stuff that the city does not have, and nor does the city have any kind of guidebook for a developer or more person just looking for a building permit to figure out what process right. they have to go through. It's right. not a, you know, development friendly right. community. It's, it's, it's actually a, hard. It's all over the place. So Andrew's suggesting to bring that together into a book is great, but I think the first step is to fix what we're bringing into the book, mm -hmm. which I, I, I think, you know, really needs to happen because we, we just can't and, and, I, and I would suspect that the planning board would, would understand this, you know, most can be, but it's not, a, it's not a lot of experience, I guess, with big developments here, but I think that's something that we need to look at to make sure that the public shade trees are protected, enhanced, and, and planted as part of private development. All right, I mean, I think that's one of the issues I see happening is that because of the change in the city government from which created this commission was executive order. The change in the charter is driving this. So there's two sets of regulations. There's the regulations that the city council is really responsible for, which are ordinances, and the mayor has to uphold them. But there also is the administrative order aspect of things, which Lynn is talking about in his email, which can be, uh, you know, uh, mitigation funds. You know, that can be executive order. So there's two sets of. And I agree with Todd. What Todd is saying is correct. Is that. Um, we need to have the regulations to put in the book that Andrew is suggesting that you can actually hand to a developer with a flow chart. They can say, you know, X, Y, and Z. You go here, you go here, you go here, you go here. Because right now, people really, it's, they ask questions. They're like, oh, who do I have to see now? Well, you're the tree ward? Oh, I'm supposed to talk to you about this. Oh, you're the building inspector? And so this is where the issue is that we have two sets of rules that are enforced by two different, I mean, they're all enforced by the, the mayor. There are different sets of rules for different things. And so how we get that all to come together is really the issue and then how we present it. And, I, and it's sometimes that I'm talking about it, it's kind of mind-boggling. Because as I'm thinking in the back of my head, how many references in the city ordinance to the Board of Public Works? For, for example, uh, overgrowths on, on sidewalks, you know, uh, people tying dogs to trees. There's all kinds of little funky little ordinances that are all governed by the Board of Public Works or the city engineer and his designee, which is not the case because the city engineer is not the director anymore. We have a plan director. Yeah. So there's all these little nuances that the mayor's office is trying to call out of the ordinances to get into an administrative mm -hmm. document. And how we go about working with them to make that happen for the tree aspect is, uh, you know, I don't know if it's either three to two conversations or kind of just zooming out. Might be might be worth having a conversation with the mayor's office to try to figure out exactly what they are doing with this and what pieces and puzzle parts and then we'll have to talk to planning as well. Because planning has adopted these different zoning regulations and uh, ordinances as they have gone along and they kept adding to them. I don't know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but is there like there's not like a document. There's, there's the subdivision there's rules. Subdivision right. rules and regulations. So that is the document that developers get, but then they don't get the other half of all the other stuff that they're supposed to have. Right, and not everything qualifies right. as subdivision. Right, and, talk to, right. Like and the, the, well, the subdivision stuff doesn't talk to the site plan review, and the site plan review doesn't talk to the DPW regs. And, yep. So what would be So it's, how do we take our first little bite of this rather gargantuan sandwich? Could, could, could we at least start by, Todd, since you have clearly the most knowledge and passion and focus on this issue, 
Um, it just feels like you are the appropriate spokesperson um, at this stage, and maybe it's just a meeting with you, Rich, and Wayne to start with, or bring the mayor in too, because it's always helpful to have the mayor at the table too, and just start with an, ask the same question, like how how do we we this isn't working. This is a, a system that is not flowing efficiently. How how do we move it toward that and get their suggestions and their buy-in? I mean, I, I, it seems to me like you kind of got to go to the top of the main parties involved. And Rich is clearly in from the DPW end. Yeah. Because so Donna's think, just getting. Well, more I think there's a. I think that's. A, I think that meeting is probably key because our focus is very small, but to fix our focus yeah, is going to take a yeah. massive undertaking. Right. So. It, it's not possible to, to fix our focus of shade trees without kind of uncovering a big Pandora's box. And so I think that that's one track for the ordinance piece. The other piece is to, by ourselves largely, put forward a public shade tree protection ordinance, which is a separate thing. But it, it, but it should be done in tandem with the work that's being done to, to, that I think the mayor wants to do is to bring, you know, start sinking some stuff up. And, you know, one exercise would just be, you know, okay, Mr. Mayor, pretend you're a developer is trying to do X, Y, and Z with the shade tree and this permit. What is the process? And his head will explode because it's impossible to figure out. But I think at the end of the day, that's probably where he wants to go, is to have a system that allows citizens and developers supposed to be able to figure out the process, you know, with relative ease. So everything makes sense, but the way to start that, I think, is that conversation. But we can focus on the on the shade tree side of it. But I just don't want to get pulled into the gigantuan task of fixing the city's you know, 200 years of ordinances. Right. Advising, advising, advising. Is Lexington is the town you said? Like, I want to take a look at that. Is that really? I mean that. Ithaca also has a very for me the problem, the problem for me is that I'm going around and I'm in, I'm enforcing two sets of rules I'm enforcing the MGL chapter 87 rules and I'm I'm enforcing um, uh, rules that I actually develop for driveway permits and trench permits and stopping developers from you know digging up against the trunk and not providing tree protection mm -hmm. so I'm and those and also the tree mitigation so really if somebody wanted to challenge us legally in court with uh, Tree mitigation because that is on an ordinance that they, they could do so. This is kind of a little cheaper. This is true. So, so there's, so it would be really good to have that conversation. But I also feel that I feel that this is like Todd said, a much larger conversation. So in the short term, to have some tools that I can use as enforcement tools, like the document that Lexington has, that's just related to public shade trees, how we go about planting. Uh, you know, how we a uh, whole document that actually will give the tree warden some teeth locally that can be adopted by the mayor's office and approved by the council. Yeah, I can I can send you the PDF of the Ithaca okay. tree plan too. It's also very comprehensive that way. Um, can I tell you kind of one of the degrees real quick. This kid's worth like crazy. In six weeks, you'll have like a really nice product. I mean, it's intense and hard to work. Though. Jesus, stop sending me emails. But once you're done, it's like it's really nice. What, what is what is what school? What school? What school look at for? We have the our green streets uh, infrastructure plan plus the face making guideline. Yeah. Um, so those are two that we deal with them, and they're really good. The so green streets guide, like, like they, want, <coughs> they want some great awards, you know, so it's kind of nice. Is um, that is, is that adopted by or by ordinance or something? Well, no, it's a planning document. So I think it was just sort of like a planning tool, but I'm sure that if you want to have a, a But yeah, it's cool. They're really fun to work with. They worked on the No River Greenway thing too. They're and really nice and the Bean Allard project. Yeah. And uh, they did the food security plan for Northampton. So the city of Wayne is very used to working with them. Okay. He doesn't always like what they have to say <laughs> because they're cutting edge. They're a little bit, they're, they, they push the envelope a little bit. Which is kind of good. Which is good. We want to be, right? We want to yeah. Well, they were green and green structure environmental like way years yeah. before yeah. anybody. Look where the conversations moved to. That's you know? right. Yeah, way ahead. All right, so and back to this issue of, of 
having a meeting. Todd, do you do you want to try for something early in the fall? Because I could go ahead and initiate getting on the mayor's calendar, getting on Wayne's calendar. All right, I'll I'll, I'll send a draft of uh, a letter that I would send the mayor and Wayne, and just make sure that I'm saying what I think you want me to say. I'll just try to grease that. Okay. Okay. And um, is September a good time? I'd just like to add in here uh, Andrew's suggestion about the Conway School, and that's kind of how they did it. They had meetings with the different people, different groups, and they were in on the meeting, and they came up with ideas and fostered ideas, and then they put the thing together, so they might be good to include them in these meetings. Yeah, they're on, well, they're maybe on six weeks cycles, so, so it depends on where they are, but yeah. They're cheap and they recorded so okay. there's more important categories than that, but they could work on it. All right, well, does someone uh, want to reach out to them with a preliminary just a preliminary yeah. Yeah, um, feeler so about whether they would be interested in a project like this? Yeah, I can reach out to you. Okay. So just to, cap, just to recap, our first baby steps are going to be, I'm going to try to schedule an introductory meeting um, with the mayor, head of planning, Rich and Todd. And Andrew's going to reach out to the Conway School just to feel them out about taking part in a, um, God, I don't even know how to describe this. <laughs> but everything we said. Oh, tree manual, wasn't it basically mm -hmm. how the city tree manual the, with the Lexington? Talk about it all. Tree care manual. Tree care manual. Yeah, I think it's, tree. it's really kind of a comprehensive yeah. tree manual. Yeah. 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 And then, um, what else we got here? Well, then I'll, I'll hold off on the old, old idea of, of getting an intern because it sounds like Conway can do that. Well, I mean, you never know what the school was like. Okay. All right. Good. Anything else about that before we move to the next item? Okay, good. All right. So, um, you know, we've planted since fall some 160 some trees, and I don't know if we've thought about a, um, you know, a deliberate way of tracking them and evaluating them based on where we got them, um, what kind of trees they were, what kind of site condition, and all that good stuff. And so Andrew suggested that we start doing that more, and um, I, I agree, and it's just a matter of how, how and when, and like what's our schedule, like how do we, how do we make this a regular part of the program? Because evaluation is, is key. Well, it will definitely be a regular part once the inventory is done. And that, and that gives us the foundation to keep that going, right? So in the meantime, I think it's more of a manual task for Rich and whoever to, to track the success failure rate, et cetera, of the recent plantings to help us make decisions in the short It's not necessarily built into the system, so once we do get the tree inventory set up, we will have this conversation again and maybe um, uh, institutionalize it a little bit better. Like, do we want to do it on a biannual basis? Do, you know, how how are we going to do how are we do that? Or, um, you know, and if the if, if the data is going in regularly, then do we once a year analyze the data? You know, so I want to just make sure that we create a system for for evaluation being a regular part of. What, what do you do on the campus? We have our own separate database to keep track of all that information. We have a person that's their job to keep track of all that information. So they just go around every fall and see, like, all right, we planted this one, no buds, we're So we do an inventory every winter to catch things that get missed. But I, 
I provide a lot of that information to the person, the collections manager, and then uh, she goes over it, asks me questions, and then we have inventory to catch anything that we missed or you know, what happened is where it is coming from. Wasn't Donna just saying that there's going to be a work order system that's going to uh, connect them? I mean, it seems like until that system's in place, we're not really sure how things are going to yeah, work. I, I actually don't think that system's going to do that. I don't think that system's going to do that. I think we're going to be better served to just use uh, like a uh, tree keeper, something that's specifically designed for trees. Mm -hmm. This thing is designed for a like, giant catch all of all kinds of different stuff, and I, right. I'm not totally sold based upon my experience with works, which is the work we're seeing presently, that we'll be able to actually track everything, including the physical characteristics of the tree. And I think really, in order, because this is such a specific mm -hmm. asset that we're trying to capture, it might be, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to work with it and see if it'll work, but I really think having a software system that is actually designed for trees is really going to be best avenue for us to go because a lot of the larger communities are using um, software programs like TreeKeeper. That's just an example of one. Yeah, it's a daily project. Like, uh, yeah. um, so, like, when I think of this, when I think of this problem, I think of there's two categories. There's like existing tree canopy, which has tree care stuff that like I'm not qualified to assess, right? But then there's also the tree planting side of the equation, which there's tree planting that's taking place. And mortality does occur within trees that you plant. So, say we've planted 200 trees, right? You know, when we're planting for the next year, like, where did our mortality occur? If this tree was purchased from this source. Why did mortality happen here? Because I know, I mean, right now this drought's been really hard on a lot of trees. So what I'm doing is I'm monitoring, and if it doesn't set buds and it looks like it's pretty dead, we do the old scratch test. It's just going to go on the list for approval. I think that would be something that I think we could do if we had a spreadsheet of where they are and just kind of basic information. I don't, I mean, I, again, it's like great to have a like advanced system for like citywide tree care, but I'm thinking of like a really small piece of the puzzle, which I don't want them to get played to. Well, backing up, there is this map that Rich and Andy have put, have put together where each tree is put on a map and that tree, I think, specifies species and date and uh, I mean, that's what we have now. Is that is that seem adequate? For no, you can link that to a spreadsheet. You can yeah. make a spreadsheet out of it. But right now, I don't have all this data entered into it. Right. So we have the trees we planted all last fall, and then uh, we have a few trees from the spring. But I have to sit down and enter the data. Right. And you can make a spreadsheet out of it. I mean, but, but isn't the infinite? But isn't the inventory a, a, a baseline condition? And didn't we say that we want the inventory to be able to be updated all the time? Yes. So as such, should whatever file we get for the tree inventory be a file system that we can manipulate? So you know, we get it, and then the next year we add 100 trees, they go in, and you should be able to run a report, you know, new trees, here's, you know, I mean, it, it, it should be all tied to the inventory. The problem is, is that when you have a work order management system, work order management system, and I know, and I was not there for this presentation, but I do not believe that if we go down to the corner of Elm and Henshaw and cut off a huge leader off that elm tree over there, and we enter in the work order system, that's going to make it to the inventory. And that's what I, that's what we need to have. That, that's big. That's zooming out, looking at it big. Andrew's looking at this, the smaller, and I. I can appreciate that looking at the smaller aspect of the work that we presently have done. So there's two different avenues here. I'm not sure that that work order system is actually going to do that. That's why we may have to you we may have to invest big picture again on a software package that actually is made just for trees that is you know GIS based. Right. No, knowing nothing, I mean Donna did offer that it can be customized. I don't it know can be it customized, but I like I said, I don't know what the interface is. That's really, that's kind of, we're supposed to get a presentation, so I have a bunch of questions I have to ask. Because DBW is really kind of, uh, we have so many different tasks that we do. Everything has to be customized, you know, from right. up to the animals, to trimming trees, to fixing a pothole. You can ask Deb, she'll tell me phone call she takes. 
So in the short term, though, I think uh, trying to, so what I've been doing is just every once a week, if not twice a week, we'll water all the trees we planted. And even ones that we planted a few years ago that are strong one. And so that's, we're just, we have a, uh, I have a basic uh, spreadsheet that identifies the locations of the trees where they are, the date we'll water them, and the, you can actually make notes for the condition of the tree. Thus, we took the 16 bare root trees out of the ground, plus one tulip tree by accident. We were supposed to, that was my fault. So, so, so that is, it's already happening. It is kind of happening, but I mean, it, it doesn't have, like for example, when Rob and I went and planted the two elm trees that were in front of uh, 118, 120 North Street, yep. right? We, we, those are setback plantings. We didn't really identify, or it's not recorded, like the soil conditions. You know, it, it was kind of, uh, it was kind of uh, rubble. It was, it was kind of garbage soil. You know, those trees, those trees didn't make it. Um, so we're not identifying those kind of things. We're identifying really where the tree is, what its present health is, and where its state, where its state stands. What about eye tree? Have you used it at all? No. You used it? It's fine. It's hard to do. I like it. It's got a way to draw reports. It's got ways to do all those things. I'm just. It does, but again, to, to do this small, we're not we're techno tech, we're not that technologically advanced. So on the end of the line, I'm the last person that has electronic device, which is this laptop. Everyone else does everything with paper. So yeah. that's how. That's why we're yeah, that's kind of we're in the dark age. Okay. Well, what it seems what, like anyone object to me asking Donna is a follow-up email whether municity can be customized so that the kind of tree care you just described could make it to our tree inventory. Well, that's going to be a question for the vendor when the vendor comes. To Okay, well then asking her whether or not situations like that can be requested from the vendor. Because the vendor is going to give whatever we ask them to give. I don't, to be honest with you, I don't think she would have the answer until we actually have the presentation. Yeah. Okay. Because Donna was not there for the presentations, so she hasn't met with anyone. Okay. The presentation happened before she was hired. Oh, um, okay. So it would be, right. they're supposed to give DPW a specific demonstration of what this is going to be able to do. That's kind of where so all these questions are. You'll ask that have. question? Yeah, because okay. I have all the other stuff I've got. Yeah. But it seems like there's two different things. There's like, okay, what are we going to do in the future? But we've got whatever, 160 or X right. 100 whatever right. trees. Right. Like, I mean, it seems like somebody could just take the pieces of paper we have and take the addresses and or just even right or even. I think it's all done. I think he yeah. has it. We know how many of the rare survived or not. Died. No, I but we don't know where they came from, right? Yeah, we, we, know, know, where they came from. we know where they came from because they, the, the type of trees that they are. Those are the ones I just. But you don't have to cry. You don't have to take the uh, take the receipt and say, no. you know, oh that was a okay. But as we go as we go deeper into this, because we, we do have uh, money set aside in a contract for um, 182 trees Three. for the fall. So we are going to have to really sharpen our pencil, or I'm going to have to sharpen my pencil and make sure that we are everything is. But by, by before planting more trees, we've got to make sure that we have it planted is in that system where it's where it came from. What what is it, fall and burlap? You know, is it bare root or Grow bag or yeah. container, which we're not planting anymore. But, so that's where that information will reside. But electronically speaking, that information doesn't make it outside of the system when the right. guys go to walk that stuff. Is, it, is that something that is untenable for you to continue to do, or would that be something that would be a volunteer possibly? If it becomes horrible, I we can change it. It's pretty cool working here. I think right? it's somebody's fan bill out there. <laughs> Um, I think, so, I don't know, they're talking about hiring somebody to actually do all the data input. Okay. But I don't necessarily think that that person's going to be able to do what this requires, so I don't know how we're going to go about doing that. Well, I was just thinking about the tree that we did plant, we just sort of <coughs> 20 died, just flagging those for removal, and coming up with an action strategy for how we're going to get rid of trees, just to kind of internalize it, but I can see the, the benefit of having uh, 
a system refined. I guess it's just different. Because um, I guess if you've been involved in the planting locations, you kind of know all that background story. Just like at work, I drive around, like, oh yeah, I remember those, they came from here, and they right. were great, and ooh, the soil was really bony, and I'm surprised mm -hmm. they're dead now. Right now, I'm not surprised they're dead. And, and, but then it's like right now, I'm kind of dealing with, okay, I have to remove all these trees, and what am I going to do after that? And I'm just trying to think of like a planting tool internally, just because this drought's been really rough. But it's been very rough. rough. Molly told me that statewide it's been really, really rough. But by fall, we'll know what's right, what didn't. I mean, some trees are, are bouncing back already. But. So Rich has the data, a lot of the data, just not entered in where, and, and it probably will get entered, in, and we probably shouldn't spend too much time on this until we see what happens with the, well, the DPW system. My feeling is that if in the nine, next nine months it just needs to reside in Rich's little quote notebook or his head, yeah. That's fine. I, I just think that we want to be super efficient with our with your time. And if a tree inventory is coming right down the pike, then let's just wait to put in a lot of that information. Well, the, the, the key, if the work order system doesn't tie back somehow to the tree inventory, then the tree inventory is it's, it's just not going to be a living document. Yes. It's going to sit there and die. No, it'll be a living document because I will, we'll, we will actually manually go. Yeah, but that's it. insane. I mean, but, but that's but that's how it happens. So you're either doing it manually, either doing it manually through GIS, or you're doing it manually with the work order system. So I, you know, the problem is that GIS by itself cannot generate work orders. So that's why TreeKeeper or something of that similar software is actually what would be the work order system just for trees and potholes and brush and dead animals well. and. My crosswalk's not painted, and you're not going to run the stop sign. It's all going to be living some other work order system. So that's what we have to find out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. Would it be would worth me asking Molly about this uh, with other municipalities? Sure. You could just ask her an email to what other folks are using. Okay. That would be fine. So, the, like, okay, the trees that die, yep. what's, what are we going to do with those? They're, they're getting, they're all had their photos have all been taken. Yep. Their photos, they're all in the lineup. I think just like Mike Pence <laughs> wants us to have a, a funeral for all fetuses, I think that we should have a funeral for every child. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, 20, you know, 20 percent. We're not supposed to talk about politics. <laughs> all right, so, 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 so 15 tree dies. 15 trees dies. 16 have, 16 have, 16 bare root trees and one uh, Amherst nursery tree for sure because we pulled it out. So yeah. 17 trees have died so far. It's not too bad. It's like well, there's a couple on South Street though too. Yeah, so yeah. We, we've been we've been watering them judicious, judiciously, hoping that they are not going to fade away. Yeah. Um, but as we've left them, you know, given them the test, spray more and spray paint, and then we've taken the water bags off and we've taken them out. Mm -hmm. So we've, we have a running list of where the locations are, mm -hmm. and so my hope is is to send all those photos, uh, at least for the bare root trees, to. Gym at Schickel's and get replacements for the fall. Mm -hmm. So you go right back at it and put those trees right back in the ground where they came from so we don't lose the, the hard work that we did. That, mm -hmm. I mean, that's my view on it. It's almost like kind of it's like dealing with graffiti, right? Somebody sprays the graffiti, you go over and you cover it up. They spray it again, you cover it. You keep going until you find it. Right, mm -hmm. until you the tree's like, fine, I'm going to grow, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> yeah. So that's the plan that I have so far. Um, the trees, Rob and I have not really talked much about the trees we got on order, that are on order, but John from Amherst Nursery has said that we can leave as many trees as we need to to overwinter mm. with him. So if we only have to, if we can only plant so many, yeah. we can do the yeah, same thing we did last nice. year. So, you know, knowing, so, knowing though that fall is definitely the best time to plant trees. Knowing that fall is definitely the best time, and hopefully by then we'll have uh, a better handle on how the order volunteer aspect of the organization will work and how we're gonna you know how we're gonna decide how we're gonna plant these trees that we're gonna have. You know, we're gonna plant them differently, we're plant them during the week and a week. There are, most of them are gonna be all grow back trees. Grow back bare roots, some B and Bs, but they'll mainly be really be able to be handled by volunteers very okay. easily. Okay, I'm gonna move us along um, because I wanna just circle back very briefly to the letter about solar options and you know the whole solar versus trees and um, we have about five minutes to talk about that and then we're going to do our, re our to-do recap and then we're going to adjourn. So um, 
Uh, Todd, would you like to well, just... Will we have any other time for other business not reasonably anticipated? We're at that subject right now. So this is one. Okay, and I have another quick one. Too. Okay, well, try our best to squeeze and it. We, yeah, if we, I just want to mention it. If we don't have time to talk about it, we can put it on the agenda. Right, tell me what it is. Um, with a volunteer um, organization. Okay, yeah, I was planning on having that be the topic of next meetings, uh, a, a large part of next meeting, because okay. Rob is inviting your people to that. Oh. that we had talked about August being the month that you were right, So but there's just a little disjointedness. I, I had thought at the chairman of last meeting that um, Marilyn would come and meet them and mm -hmm. discuss what's next move. Jen did come to the meeting with, with them. In other words, they had a meeting, and Jen and I went to the meeting, and we said, look, we're the volunteer organizers. Here's now, information. To give mean. them information about what we were up to, what we had been up to, and basically looked to them and said, okay, you know, you guys were kind of passing, looking to pass the torch to some other organization, other group uh -huh. other than us to be the organizers. They, they're on their way. I mean, they're, they're getting organized. Jen came in. Okay, majority. so, but it seems to me like we can still have that conversation at the next meeting. We can, except that um, in order to organize all the volunteers and get the thing going, these people have to be working now because it's only six weeks and we're expecting people to show up with shovels. So uh, I had suggested that they be in touch with Marilyn because I thought she was the contact person. And they contacted Marilyn and said, Look, do you want to hand over volunteer lists or not? Or yes, would you give them to us? And Marilyn wrote back and said, would there be a meeting later? I'm just saying the time is ticking on that. So I have a question, very, very clear question. On my computer, I have a zillion emails from all these different volunteers and addresses. They came from my three or four years of planting, my fourth summer. They came from the survey. They came from random sources. I don't have them sorted as to where I got them. I want to give them to these people so that they can help me be organized for this six weeks from now. Okay. Um, I, it's a slightly different recollection I have of the way we ended at last meeting, which was that we were going to do some research on models of volunteer organization, and then we were going to come together with that information and with your volunteers and have a conversation about what kind of structure we want to have. So I, it, it, this feels like more of a conversation than we can have in the next five minutes. Okay, but I feel like we have, what kind of organization we will have, I feel more like it's what kind of organization they will have. I don't feel like I'm that I want right. to, to be driving that. In other words, well, we talked about at the last meeting um, that we would, as a commission, have some input about a, a structure, and we would invite the other people who want to have input about the structure to the meeting, to an, we have a conversation. To an August meeting, I think. The, the, the idea was that they would come to an August meeting, but they don't know. I think that they need to work themselves. I mean, they are an organization that's quite independent from us and doesn't really interact with us, except coming to offer us volunteers to do work. Which, and, which I think is great, but one of the issues that I can already see happening, I feel like I'm in the dark right now. Right. So there's a whole group of people over to my left that actually want to do stuff. Right. But there's no. There is no conduit for communication between that group and what the mission of this group is. And that's where that's where there's the disconnect. And so before, I think personally, this is my own opinion, but it's my opinion, before those volunteers can actually start to organize, or they, they sorry, before they can actually implement the work that they would like to do, there has to be that conduit between that group and this and this group and myself. So we need to we need to have that conversation um, with that group, but we also I think we also as a commission as the tree warden should have a little bit of say into exactly what they're going to be doing because they're you know I'm, I'm see I think there's a misapprehension here they're not going to do anything except what you ask them to do in, ter in your realm I mean if you ask them to plant trees right. They w will plant trees if you ask them to water them. They'll water them. If you ask yeah. them, you know, so they, they were very in, like they were very clear. Like they are like totally like adept, totally okay. unbelievably right. organized. Like they they're like ready to go. And, but they were very clear that they wanted communication with. They wanted a liaison. And I I left the last meeting thinking, oh, that's what Carolyn's 
And they were very, also very clear that you were the person, you know, that needed to put the stamp of okay of whatever they do, you know. Because we talked about, right. we talked about the issue of you're the person that's going to get the phone call. And they were like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're, you know, like they, they were, what you just said, they were like already ahead of the game on that. Okay, so, they were so, like, yeah. So not to take all the time up on this item, obviously, and I'm just referencing the time frame we have. It would be good. It would be. So I guess what I need to know, basically, my first thing is, you know, uh, strength is numbers. How many volunteers are there, and how much? What kind of work can they do? Th those are the kind of things that I don't know. So, in order to give folks tasks, I need to know exactly what they what they bring. So, again, I think having a meeting with them okay. or a meeting with representatives from the volunteer group but to start with, mm -hmm. even if even if go ahead, Brad. But they have no idea because they don't have a volunteer list, and that's what I'm asking for. I'm saying, can't I hand them the volunteer list so they can find out how many volunteers they have? All right, but I don't want a list. From our right. list. All right, and then the then list is... Yeah, no, it is. It's, it's generated from the so survey. So, last, last, what I recall from last meeting is, is I expressed interest as to Lily in helping with volunteer coordination, starting with research, what, what are models of other volunteer organizations, um, if, based on research and discussion, the model that we agree to is to have a liaison, I would be happy to serve in that capacity, but I don't remember volunteering to do that at last, the last mm -hmm. meeting. Okay. So when I received that email, mm -hmm. um, I, I invited that woman to this meeting to hear our discussion regarding this. Right. It's a little chicken in But just to let know that we're still hey, like in discussion. I think, I think that we can just resolve this by me putting this in a hefty amount of time on the next meeting yep. agenda. You bring your yep. research, I'll bring whatever I have. Um, invite your whoever wants to be part of this organizing capacity to the meeting, and then we can go forward. Okay, so it sounds like that's what Rich it, would like to. There's a problem. I have on my computer all of the contacts of all these different people. If I can't eat, if I'm not going to use those contacts with their help between now and the next meeting, we are not going to have a robust group planning of trees in the fall, which is okay. We can just decide that right here and now. So yeah, I, 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 I sent you the list from the... Um, right. I know I have it. I have all the... But I feel like, as Lily said, the list was generated by this commission, and therefore it's owned by the commission. They have to say it's okay to get working on it and sharing it or not. Oh. I, that, that's really... You just ask him permission. Can I give them this pile of If I can't give it to them and we're going to meet in a month to talk about what we're going to do, then we're not going to have fall volunteers. I mean, it's just, it's. Really? I, I, yeah, I see there's still being plenty of time. Well, August, I mean, I've organized 45 volunteers to come to, to do that tree sampling in a matter of six weeks. Well, this is this is six weeks starting today. Are there, right. are there, is there Less. an issue with sharing? No, no, but you just said six weeks. It's six mm -hmm. weeks to September first when we're going to start. It's less than that. Would so, you be okay to share that? I'd be honest with you. That's a discussion that I think that I would I would need to all based on the weather. Yeah, I mean, I mean we may not, but but we presumably would get ready so that if we could well, we start planning. Yeah, I mean, I think we should actually have a talk. I think in order to do this effectively. I don't know. I, it seems to me is that if you want to contact the people on the list and say, look, if we're, we're, we're looking to get volunteers for a certain date, maybe sometime in September, what is your availability? Well, that's exactly it. So that, that would be, so it would be like a survey in a sense. I don't know how you would manage that. It would that. be that Google form I created. How about if I do <laughs> this? Well, I think how about if I do this? For, the, for Arbor Day, I took that list that the survey generated, and I emailed everybody who was interested in Arbor Day and it generated maybe 25% interest. But I, I could do the same thing. I could email anybody who said they were interested in volunteering and say that there's another volunteer group that's self-organizing. Um, with your permission, I, I could share that person. Well, well, what we want, I mean, in what, what I want is to do what I've been doing. Or is just the continuation of what Jan and I have been doing. We've been organizing volunteers by relating to them through email and getting them to come out and plant trees. 
And I guess I'm just saying, should we continue to do that? And I want to do it with the help of some other people. It, it, it comes down. Because they are just, they're like ready to, like, they're like totally geeked out. You know what I mean? And they like are, you know, they're on base camp and they're like. Right, they, they have so, base camp. Oh, yeah, it. man. They're, yeah. they're like totally know what the they're, hell they're, they're doing. They're building a website, so, all this stuff. And yeah. So the, the problem is. They that, just need, they it, love to meet. Why, why you just, no, no, there's nothing wrong with that. There's, there's, well, I, I think, we I think, misinterpreted it. We thought yeah, that yeah, Maryland yeah. was going to go and work yeah, with them and then yeah. come back to you guys. That was yeah. what we... Right. And I think they just want... To them. And they think they just want to start making their databases and figuring out how they can whatever... Do. And so I guess so we're from, asking... So from a legal standpoint, then, how do you, how do you take all the emails that we have they're public information. So then you can just basically give them to the organization and let them, and that, do what Marilyn just suggested, and have Marilyn do a blank email and say, I'm going to be forwarding your emails to this person or these individuals to create a volunteer list for tree planting this fall. Or you guys can email. I think I the, the main, the, the, the issue boils down to this, in my opinion. If, if they're going to, if they're going to take the volunteer list and email them and say, we, this group are going, are seeking volunteers. They're they're kind of doing it, you know, in partnership with the, the city and the public safety commission, right? And that's where the gap exists because we don't yet have a partnership or an understanding of how right. it's going to work. Right. So that that's what we need to solve at the next meeting. In the meantime, I don't have a problem with emails going out, but their correspondence to the volunteers cannot reference any kind of, you know, coordination with the city or what have you, because there right. is none. Right. Mm -hmm. It yeah. would just be, do you want to, do you want to join with this organ these volunteers, this volunteer organization, to volunteer to plant trees? Nothing to do with, this is the city or commission, of course. I, I keep it even simpler. Do you, are you interested in helping do tree planting this fall? And and because because that doesn't suggest any sort of larger organizational infrastructure because there is none at this point. Well, so it's just do you want because that's the urgency that's I'm feeling urgency from you because you want to get volunteers lined up to plant trees this fall. So why don't you just cast out an email or even Marilyn can cast out an email saying, uh, you know, please reply back. Who's in? What? Well, who's in? Yeah. Who's, who's in? What, what we're yeah. trying to do is instead of getting emails back from people. Is the, the, the goal is to actually send them to, to a website that will handle this so that I'm not the one doing it. It was very hard for them. So that's, that's just it. part of the whole what is an efficient volunteer program look like right. part that we all were going to bring information together. We're, we're going to be over meeting. So I, I really am going to insist that we table this to the next and meeting. Get them and to we come. can have them yeah. come. And we have a robust conversation. Now we all get on the same page. Except, Meanwhile, except I just want to take away from this site. So don't misunderstand that Maryland isn't going to meet with them because they meet regularly. I mean, there's an opportunity for someone to come and meet with them. So I mean, it's a two-way thing. It's like we have our little silo, and they've got their silo, and there's no reason why someone can't come to their silo. So aside from them sending someone to our well, silo. Well, what do they mean? Except the except the business of the public shade tree commission should be conducted in public. So they, they, have, they have to come to us and we have to have an initial conversation about how the coordination is going to work between right. a, a public body and a private nonprofit. And I think we're all on the same page except for the timing of the use of the emails, which right. I think either needs to come from you personally to the, just say who's in and right. you know, give up on the website thing for four months because we don't have the, you know, we should have this, we should have dealt with it, you know, met with them months ago. Well, it didn't exist. Well, great, but I don't think the four weeks are going to kill, no. you know, where we end up. Just, you know, send no, out an email and say who's in, and we're going to coordinate all this in the next couple months, you know, under the under the purview of the, the tree board and the public safety. Okay, so the emails go back to you, to me. Of course, until we or until we figure this until we figure it out. Or just wait, just wait until they come to the August meeting and get as many people as we can get at the last minute. How about if I send an email and say, if you're interested, please contact the leader of this group? Well, I mean, can't we, can't we use an, one of their email addresses instead no, of mine? No, because I, I agree with Alan. Uh, I heard what Scott yeah. had to say. I think that we, because, yeah. because
because there is no official endorsement or official affiliation between the volunteer group in the city of Northampton and the Public Shape Tree Commission that we cannot do that. It but Todd is saying it's public record. It is public record, but the problem is, is that you, you're giving, in a sense, we're giving away a set of emails to people that we don't know, number one. Mm -hmm. That's a problem that I personally have. That right. I don't know who these people are. Right. I don't know what their mission statement is. I, don't, right. I understand from what you're telling me what they would like to do, right. but I think it's very important that we develop a relationship with this group prior to us dumping all the emails mm -hmm. that we receive, mm -hmm. which is a public mm -hmm. works department and a public body, to a private entity. Mm -hmm. That way, there everybody's on the same page. I mean, it's really, and I don't, I don't think we're going to lose a lot of volunteers. No, no, no. It's, it's a matter of management. It's a matter of me. It is. It's a matter of me. I mean, right. I, it's a matter of me dealing with like what would really be about a hundred or more hundred. Right. But, but or, or you could choose just to wait, just yeah. to wait just until uh, until no, August third. No, you I, know, and then we start planting in October. Instead well, of that September. would presume that we, we don't have, have an early August meeting. We, we don't have a quorum for exactly. it. No, no, I mean the middle of August, right? Yeah. The, sec the third the week third in week. August, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The third yeah. week in August to get ready for what might be September. Okay, well, we have a choice. And, I mean, and we're well, dealing you with just start planting in October. You know what I mean? I yeah. mean, it is what it is, yeah. you know? We, you know. All right. I just think that there's got to be a, a relationship with this group between this public body or we actually give away emails that people sent yeah. to this public body in good faith to some yeah. that we, not that I don't trust them, yeah, yeah, I don't right. know them. I just right, right. want to develop a relationship with them and actually talk to them. And they, and Todd is correct, they need to come yeah, to yeah. the public realm in order to, yeah. to right. talk so, to us. So the reason that Jen came and the reason I'd like someone 603, to 6.03, I'm just going to do a time check. We're past our, our meeting time. Can we go run over a few minutes? Um, I, a I, someone has to make a motion for that. Oh, I, I move we run over a few minutes. Can, just, can you just be specific? Yeah, five minutes. Okay. Run over for five minutes. We need a second. No one wants to run over five minutes. <sighs> Ten, you wouldn't run a second. Good, he said. But, but you, you, I think you're beating a dead horse here. If you've got something okay, else let me just, to let say. Let me just finish this. All in no, favor? Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Abstain? <laughs> okay, the opposed have it. All right, so we're going to adjourn this meeting. Okay. And we're going to invite volunteers to the next meeting. We're going to have a robust conversation about structuring the volunteer plan program that we can all buy into. Okay, thank you.